Welcome to our worship service as we gather to prepare our hearts for the, the um, time of Jesus' passion and death and as we follow Jesus on his journey to the cross. This year we are looking at Jesus um, in his own words, so what Jesus said about himself to help us learn more about who he is and what he's done for us. I would invite you to stand as you are able. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hurry to deliver me. Come and help me, my Lord and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for our opening hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, which is found in your red hymnal. Let us pray. Lord God, 
you have gathered us together to observe the Lenten journey. Encourage us in our disciplines of prayer, study, worship, giving, and serving. We pray that Christ, who humbled himself, taking on the form of a servant, might look upon us in mercy. May our lives be governed by the Holy Spirit, so that we may be kept steadfast in the faith, and at the last be exalted with you in eternity. For you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is found in the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. They shall know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, says the Lord God. Here ends the reading. The second reading is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John in the 10th chapter. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as I have said, and as you know, because most of you have been here last week, uh, we're getting to know Jesus in his own words during this season of Lent. So in the Gospel of John, Jesus makes seven statements about himself that begin with the words, I am. By using those particular words, Jesus was making it very clear that he was more than just an ordinary rabbi or even a prophet. I am is sometimes written as Yahweh, the Hebrew word. And Yahweh, or I am, is the proper name of God. So we call him Heavenly Father, and that's his title, but Yahweh, I am is his proper name, just like your name might be Kurt or Kay or um, Donna. <laughs> so, I am is the name that Moses gave to him, that God gave to Moses, that was God's name for himself. And so, by using these words to describe himself, Jesus was saying plainly that he too was Yahweh. 
He too was God. Some of Jesus' I am sayings, such as I am the light of the world, or I am the resurrection and the life, are very familiar to us. But the one we're focusing on tonight is not quite as well known. In our modern world, its meaning might not be quite so obvious. I am the gate for the sheep sounds to our modern ears like kind of a strange thing for Jesus to say. Many of us have grown up on farms or been around livestock, and so we have a picture that jumps into our heads when we hear Jesus speak about a gate, right? Most likely, this picture looks something like this up on the screen. A modern-day sheep pen is usually made of metal or wooden panels. And if that's your mental image when you hear this verse, you might be missing out on much of the meaning of what Christ meant when he was calling himself the gate for the sheep. After all, you can see lots of ways to get into that pen without going through the gate, right? Someone could easily climb over the fence. Or if they were ambitious, they could tunnel under it, or they could slip between the rails if they're skinny enough. But the modern pen bears little resemblance to the sheep pens of Jesus' time. The sheep pens then were usually stone-walled structures, often built in front of caves or enclosed with thorny brambles to keep anyone or anything from climbing over. So they looked more like this slide. You see the cave with the stones piled up in front of it. So there would be no easy way to get in um, into that sheep pen. So at sundown every day, the sheep were led into this enclosure to protect them from predators and thieves during the night. So some of them were big enough that several flocks would go in together. But for security, there was only one gate into the pen. A watchman who was a hired hand only allowed certain shepherds and sheep to enter that enclosure. If anyone else tried to come into the pen over the wall, it was obvious that he was a thief who had no business being there at all, not a genuine shepherd. In smaller sheep pens, the shepherd would sometimes lie down for the night in the entrance to the sheepfold, becoming a human gate that protected the sheep from all intruders. So surprisingly, or maybe not, Jesus doesn't begin his teaching by calling himself the good shepherd, but instead says that he is the gate to the sheep pen. With this, he declares himself to be the one and only way into the pen. Just as in some of his other statements, he declares that he is the only way to the Father. Only the sheep who come through Jesus the ones he has called by name and made his own can have the abundant life he promises. Aaron Rodgers writes, Sheep don't know a gate from a fence row. As a Midwestern sheep farmer, I can tell you this for certain. A recent run-in with a wayward sheep proves my point. Because the proverbial grass is always greener on the other side, our sheep are constantly stretching their necks to try to nibble the grass outside the fence. Occasionally, one will barrel through the wire to get to the good stuff she's been denied. So it was that we discovered one of our sheep outside the pen one hot day last summer. The solution should have been easy. We simply opened the gate. But due to stubbornness or oblivion, the ewe remained outside the field. We called and whooped, summoning her back to the comfort and safety of her flock. Instead, she kept ramming herself into the fence. Time and time again, the gate was wide open, but she defaulted to futile attempts to make her own way. When it comes to revealing who Jesus is, sheep are especially good instructors. 
No wonder Jesus frequently asked us to envision sheep pens as he revealed his identity as the gate for the sheep. The theme woven throughout scripture is this. We are like sheep, prone to wander from the fold in search of false hope that can never fully satisfy. Because our shepherd is good, the gate to salvation is wide open, but we'll never find it on our own. We try to be self-sufficient, to do all the good deeds, and we may even convince ourselves for a time that we've got our stuff together more than anyone else. But the reality is, when left to our own devices, we will just keep ramming ourselves up against false hope and good intentions. Jesus, describing himself as the gate, reminds us of the Psalms, where we hear of the righteous entering into salvation through the gate of the Lord. When the sheep enter through that gate, they find salvation or protection from death, but they also have access to lush pastures and fresh water and everything else they need for an abundant life. And when Jesus makes us his own by calling us and redeeming us, we receive everything we need. Peace, love, joy, hope, fellowship, all the gifts God blesses us with, everything life is meant to be. Some people think that being a Christian is all about following certain rules, staying out of trouble, or thinking we're better than everyone else. But the trouble is, just like the stubborn you, we can't and won't stay out of trouble. We can't and won't go through that gate on our own. And if you really listen to Jesus and look at what he did, you realize that's not it at all. Jesus didn't come to give you more things to do, to make your life difficult or boring. He came to make it abundant, overflowing with good things. His love doesn't hem you in, it makes you free. Free from worry, free from guilt, free from fear. Not because you're better, but because he's better. Not because you've done something, but because he's done everything. Jesus' willingness to give up his heavenly throne and to come down to earth to make God's forgiveness accessible changed everything for you. His love, his protection, his offer of forgiveness and hope and eternal life are for you. To you, Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Our hymn is Children of the Heavenly Father.
I invite you to stand and join me in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us gather our hearts together as one and offer our prayers to God. Let my prayer rise before you as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. It is you, loving God, who breathes life into each of us. It is you who calls us into existence. It is you who forgive the sins of those who are penitent. Create a new heart in us, O God, as we acknowledge our sin before you. You are the God of the living and are pleased to offer us forgiveness and reconciliation. Stretch forth your right hand to save us and defend us from our enemies. You, O oh Lord, see us who have no strength, and you revive us through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We have built into these services a time of, of silent pr prayer and reflection um, just because so often we're just busy rushing from here to there. And so this provides us with some time to simply pray and to listen to our Heavenly Father's voice.
May the God of light and truth lead you from this place. Be not far from me, O Lord, the rock of my salvation. May the Savior of the world encourage us to follow the example of his great humility, that we would be patient and long-suffering in our service. May the Holy Spirit accompany and guide us and grant us peace at the closing of the day. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Lord Throughout These 40 Days. Go in peace, Christ is with you.